Hello, welcome to BioGrade TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Jackie's Joachim Yombi Opango. Yombi Opango was born on the 12th of January 1939 in Fort Rose, now known as Owando, located in the Covert region north of the Congo. He began a career in the army by attending the Ecole Militaire Interim from 1960 to 1962. Yombi Opango rose to become the army chief of staff with the rank of major in the regime of President Marian Nguabi, the third president of the Republic of the Congo. He was suspended from the position on the 30th of July 1970, but was later restored. While being the army chief, he was also a member of the ruling Congolese Labour Party PCT, and was associated with the party's right wing. There was a radio broadcast on the 22nd of February 1972 through which leftist elements in the PCT claimed that Yombi Opango was trying to take over power in a rightist coup and that he had ordered the arrest of members of the PCT political bureau. It turned out that this claim was part of an unsuccessful leftist coup attempt led by Lieutenant Ange Diawara. In 1972, Yombi Opango became a member of the Central Committee of the PCT. A year later, he was promoted to the rank of colonel and became a member of the PCT's political bureau. He served as the Secretary General of the Council of State until the 9th of November 1974 when he was moved to the post of Council of State Delegate in charge of defense. After Ngwabi was assassinated in March 1977, Yombi Opango became head of state and served in office for about two years until he was forced to resign in February 1979. His forceful resignation was caused by the accusation that he attempted to form a rightist faction in the PCT. His successor, President Denis Sasu Ngueso, held him in detention for some years. He was also under house arrest for a while and was eventually expelled from the PCT with his property seized in 1979. As if that was not enough, he was also demoted from the rank of a general to that of private on the 20th of October 1979. Sasu Ngueso was sworn in for a second term as president on the 10th of November 1984. It was then that he announced Yombi Opango's release based on the interest of national unity and peace. In July 1987, 20 officers were arrested for allegedly plotting a coup. Yombi Opango's name came up during investigation in September 1987 and he was arrested along with Captain Pierre Anga. On the 14th of August 1990, Sasu Ngueso announced his release along with all other political prisoners. This was in a move to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Congolese independence. At the February to June 1991 National Conference, some delegates accused Yombi Opango and Sasu Ngueso of complicity in Ngwabi's assassination. Yombi Opango was his party's candidate in the August 1992 presidential election. He clinched sixth place as the flag bearer of the Rally for Democracy and Development RDD, with 3.49% of the votes. In his native covert region, he came second with 27% of the vote behind Sasu Ngueso. He allied with President Pascal Lisuba and Lisuba's party, the Pan-African Union for Social Democracy, UPADS, and contested in the first round of the May 1993 parliamentary election. 
Lisuba appointed him as Prime Minister on the 23rd of June 1993. The opposition contested the results and this caused a severe political dispute. The opposition went as far as setting up a rival government. Yombi Opango resigned on the 13th of January 1995 so that Lisuba would be free to consult other parties in the formation of a new government. On the 23rd of January, he was reappointed as Prime Minister with the new government. Four members of the opposition Union for Democratic Renewal URD, were also part of the new government. In 1996, some UPADS members who were from Lisuba's Teke ethnic group called for Yumbi Opango's resignation because they wanted the prime minister to be a Teke. Yombi Opango resigned as requested on the 23rd of August 1996. Four days later, Lisuba appointed Charles David Ganao to replace him. When Sasu Ungueso visited Owando, Yombi Opango's political stronghold, in May 1997, there was an outbreak of violence between his supporters and those of Yombi Opango. The poorly managed violence resulted in a civil war that began in June, leading to Lisuba's temporary removal in October 1997. Yombi Opango supported Lisuba during the war, serving as leader of the presidential majority. He fled into exile in Côte d'Ivoire and France after Sasu Ungueso's victory. In December 2001, Yombi Opango joined two other exiled politicians, Lisuba and Bernard Kolelas, to reject the electoral process that Sasu Ungueso began, claiming that it was not transparent. They then called for a passive boycott of the January 2002 constitutional referendum. In late December 2001, Yombi Opango was sentenced in absentia to 20 years of hard labor for embezzlement. Lisuba too was convicted and got a 30-year sentence. They were not alone in this, as some other former members of the government were sentenced too. The embezzlement charge was based on an accusation that Lisuba, Yombi Opango, and others engaged in a corrupt deal with Occidental Petroleum to sell oil to the company for 150 million US dollars in 1993, and some of the money was sent to a private bank account in Belgium, while the rest of it was said to have been used for election. None of it, allegedly, was sent into the national treasury as expected. In 2005, there was a dispute in the RDD leadership. Yombi Opango, who was still in exile, asked the party leadership in Congo Brazzaville to approach the governing PCT. But Saturnin Okabe, who led the party in Yombi Opango's absence, refused to do so. This made Yombi Opango react angrily. The Congolese Council of Ministers approved an amnesty for Yombi Opango on the 18th of May 2007, and he returned to Congo Brazzaville on the 10th of August 2007. About a thousand of supporters gathered to welcome him joyfully. On the 8th of September 2007, Yombi Opango resumed the leadership of the party. He also announced his intention to reorganize the party and improve its position on the national political scene. He and his wife, Mari Noele Ngolo, spent about half their time in Congo and the other half in France from 2007 until his death in 2020 because he often fell sick. He eventually died of COVID-19 on the 30th of March, 2020, at the American Hospital in Paris, France. He was buried in Owando, Congo, on the 31st of October, 2020. What have we missed out of this biography of Yombi Opango? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, Please like this video, share, 
and subscribe to our channel.